In this Bimalflex session, we are going to go through the initial configuration of a Bimalflex project. What we will cover is we will deploy the initial Bimalflex database and Bimal catalog database. Then we will create our first customer or metadata project instance. We will configure connections, configure batches, and projects. Let me show you how we do this. When you open Bimal Studio, you'll see this Bimalflex project icon here. When you click that, you will see this Bimalflex project new project dialog box. It is very likely that when you create your Bimalflex project, you may have received a later version of a bundle from us than the original one that shipped to Bimal Studio. To change this, you merely point this to where you have placed the, the new bundle. Now, I've put mine into the Bimalflex folder here. You could put it anywhere. Now, we'll specify the name of the Bimalflex project. And we see, okay, this will go and create you the initial Bimalflex project. After you've created the project, you'll notice a couple of different couple of things. The first is the Bimalflex bundle file down the bottom here, and also the Bimalflex Excel file here, which is the tool that we use to interact with our metadata. First, we need to set up new Bimalflex databases. So what to do that, you hit the set up Bimalflex database. And I'm going to leave the defaults here, except I'm going to just change the name of the database to Bimalflex demo. You could name the databases anything you want, but we would recommend keeping the defaults. I hit deploy. This will now deploy the two, the Bimalflex database catalog or the DAC pack, and also the Bimal catalog DAC pack to the SQL server. You will need system administration permissions to do this deployment. Let me head over to the management studio and just show you where it's being created. So as you can see here, I only have um, my demo database that, uh, source, but now I've created my, if I refresh this, there's my Bimalflex demo database and there's my Bimal catalog. Inside of the Bimalflex demo database, it's, the tables are broken up into two sections. The apps over here, which effectively is the metadata that is current, that is uh, Excel is interfacing with and Bimal Studio is interfacing with. And then that's backed by a meta vault, which has all of the metadata um, versioned and tracked through history. So all of the changes that you make to your metadata is tracked and version controlled for later uh, rollback or um, even comparing different versions across them. So I'll hit done there and I'll head over to back into Bimal Studio. So once I'm back in the Bimal Studio, the Bimal Flex database um, would have been pre-populated for me. I'll hit update here. Um, update here. You'll see that there is currently no customers there. So we create a new customer or metadata project. Bimal Flex was designed for a multi-tenanted environment, but it's also designed for multiple projects within the same customer or in the um, same project team. So I'm just going to give this again, I'm going to give it the name Bimalflex Demo and I'm going to hit create. We recommend that you leave the auto generate good um, on. The reason for that is, is when you contact version support, if you have your own unique user ID, we can easily integrate that metadata and debug it for you. I hit create and on the versions, I hit update. Again, within the same metadata instance or metadata store, you could have multiple versions of metadata, which allows you the ability to, as you go through the development lifecycle, you could have a project that is version one or 1.1, and then you will release that into production, and then you will start version 1.2 because you want to retain the metadata as it was when you released into production. So you could have multiple versions of your metadata. Um, I'll just save this. So now I've actually set up all of my Bimalflex databases and configurations. And as I said, we now want to go and look at the connections, the projects and batches, and then look at that in a little bit of detail. So I'm going to head over to the Excel add-in. So here is the Excel add-in. So I'm just going to open that up, and that's opening up the Bimalflex uh, Excel. And within Excel, we'll, you'll see again, you'll see a Bimalflex ribbon down the top here. So there will be a Bimalflex ribbon down the top here. And again, the first thing you'll see here is this metadata connection. To set this up, if you're in a trial mode, um, the server and you will have be limited to what you can set up here. But because I've got my server here set up here, I'm going to then hit update, connect to the database that I've got my metadata in. Again, I'll hit update on the customer and choose Bimal Flex database. I'm, a, I'm version one, I use the default, so I'm over there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit this get all entities button. And what that will do is it'll give us the option here, which effectively says, you are starting a new project. Do you want us to create some sample metadata for you? Or do you want to start with a completely empty spreadsheet? 
Now I'm gonna hit the create sample metadata here, just so that I can go through the metadata with you. I'll close this up and I'll head over to the connections tab. So as you can see here, we've pre-populated some sample metadata. This is effectively our, I suppose our demo environment that we use. Um, and then from here, you can then go and alter and change things up. So what I'll do is um, I'll go through the metadata on the connections tab from the left to the right. So effectively the first thing here is the name, which really is just the name that you want to give it inside. So this is the, an internal name, so you can abbreviate that. I would recommend that you um, give it uh, the shortest meaningful name that you could possibly can. The connection string is exactly that. It's a connection string that either connects to a database table or to a flat file if you are connecting to flat files. The catalog is the um, database that you're connecting to. This does not necessarily need to be the same as the catalog that you have in here. And to give you an example, is let's just say your database is called AdventureWorks. So let's look at AdventureWorks here. Your database is called AdventureWorks LT 2012, but in your development environment, it's called AdventureWorks LT 2012 underscore dev. So it may very well be that the initial catalog in your connection string is different from the catalog that you've specified here, which is the real sort of database name. Connection type is exactly that. It's what type of connection you want to do. Um, we've got OLADBD, OLADB, ADO net file, ODBC, Teradata, etc. Um, we, we're going further down here into things where you can go and connect to CDC or you have some OLADB SQL based ETL, uh, My, Microsoft Master Data Services. And then the system type exactly what it says it's, it's whether it's a sql server db2 mysql teradata or azure sql data warehouse which we support at the moment integration stages is the different layers of the bimble flex database that we support so obviously you've got source that goes into staging that you can add persistent staging um, intermediate which is effectively a staging environment for your data warehouse you can have your data warehouse which is either a dimensional data warehouse or data data mart you got raw data vault and business data vault and then again, you've got raw files, master data services, analysis services. You've got all of these different integration stages here. An OLADB connection is if you have an ADO dot connection, something like this over here, that becomes your master database. So let's just say you are connecting to ADO.net. Within SQL Server, within SIS, you quite often need to execute SQL task, and then you would need to define an OLADB connection for that. So the same connection with OLADB connection, it's optional. And again, ADO connection is really for OLADB connections in your data mart layer. We require ADO.net connection to do um, inferring of dimension members. You can, it's optional. If you leave it out, we do not infer the dimension members. The record source um, is used for in data vault modeling. You need to have a record source. File path and file pattern is exactly what it says. That is used in our when we import flat files you can specify a file path. These will also be parameterized, obviously, in your project. So if you are developing, this could be wherever you are developing on. Uh, as you deploy it through the different environments, these will be set using parameters. The sys history is only relevant to source connections, and that is if you want to have a persistent staging and you want to persist history in that persistent staging. Number of threads, again, is only really relevant in source connections. It will split the, the pipeline path into multiple paths using the balance distributor. Again, we would probably recommend leaving this at zero and use the number of threads on the batches to execute multiple uh, batches. The server and provider is used for where, where you need to specify a server and a provider is used when you are connecting to ADO connections and the provider is different to the default provider. And you'll quite often have provider settings in things like DB2 or MySQL and even Oracle. Exclude from build, exclude from model, and exclude from validation. If you specify at the connection level, exclude from build, it means that the tables will be brought in for modeling, but none of the packages associated with this connection will actually be built in Bimbo Studio. Exclude from model actually says that all of the tables will be excluded from the project, so you wouldn't actually even see the tables to be modeled. And exclude from validation means that there may be some reasons why we are, why our validators um, are firing to say to you that there is an error in your metadata. And for some reason that you, you may want to actually exclude all the validations for this, um, for this connection. Not recommended, but um, it just gives you an option to do that. Description, there to capture some 
business glossary information if you have it or just some additional metadata is deleted is, a, is, is there to show you whether the connection is deleted or not within Bimble Flex we logically delete all the metadata you could have connections that are deleted so I'll, con I'll delete this connection down the bottom here um, you can also just delete the row if you want and I'll set the current sheet here if I get the current sheet here you'll see that um, that metadata for the, the worldwide importers has gone however if I go to the metadata connection here I could say show deleted and I then get current sheet where I can then see that information again with the deleted flag so I can then go and undelete that if I want so that allows us the ability to undelete it we also have some administration still procedures that will allow you to if you have a lot of metadata that you possibly have cleaned up and, and deleted or soft deleted for one way or another there are still procedures that allows you to go and hard delete those uh, metadata after it's written to the meta vault so it will write to the meta vault that i'm about to delete this information and then it will actually clean out the the soft delete so let's head over to the batches um, the batches are so batches are exactly what it says it batches a, a collection of packages together to be executed together so think about this as a control file that says these 10 packages need to be grouped together and those need to be grouped together batches and projects works hand in hand you have a couple of options here um, number of threads within the so batch control it'll say that i need to have this amount whatever this number is of packages execute in parallel so it's a number of um, threads that it will have in its size use orchestration uh, we'll explain orchestration a little bit further on but within the bimbleflex framework we track the package execution status so if the package is busy executing or if it has executed or if it's failed and the next time it runs what should it do should it roll back should it skip um, should it cancel um, and then that orchestration it may be a scenario where you actually don't want to fire orchestration and just have the package run and then therefore you'll say oh you know what whenever i run my data mod load don't worry about what i've loaded before i just want to run it from the beginning i want everything to run again use exercise express is we use that quite often when we are working on azure sql data warehouse projects where the source system may not have sql server installed at all or the source system may be a point of sale system that are using sql express as a database backend use SI express will then will create a separate pa a special package that will as lightweight as possible extract the information from the source system and put that into a flat file ready to be uploaded to sql data warehouse um, there is quite a lot of limitations with exercise express and we've accommodated this but um, that's um, a little bit more of a, a detailed subject description and is deleted is exactly the same as for connections just but for just for batches project is really where we glue everything together you know a project is where we create a project and projects could obviously have parent projects so you can actually say well here's five projects that then belongs to a, a, a parent project um, and you would use smaller projects um, to split things up by batches if you want and then group them all together into one single pro so how projects work is we have the source connection so it's really source to target the source being either a source or a staging environment or the data vault so it's really everything works from a source to a target and within that you can have um, for some of the source target combinations you could have different settings here so if i'm connecting to a source and i want to go into a data vault i possibly want to go, i need to go and stage it and then i may choose to persist the staging into an ods or a persistent staging layer and then i'm going to go into a data vault so this these uh, columns here really um, and with including the batch will glue the project together to say how the data is moving between the different layers exclude from build exclude from model exclude from validation again is exactly the same thing um, it is every all the objects um, associated with a project will be excluded from build excluded from model or excluded from validation depending on if they are set these settings here you can also any of the exclude settings anything that says exclude from and the connection string can be toggled on a per user basis so you can say use my connections and exclusions in other words it'll use your settings and this is um, when you work in a team environment where you have global metadata but you are actually developing maybe a small part of the project you may be developing working on one source while the rest of the team are working on another source 
you may want to exclude their source from your project and it will only exclude it in your context. Last but not least is the integration template. Um, we only have a couple at the moment. It's source to target and then source to file extract and source to zip file extract. Source to file extract um, is when you are, let's just say you're going from a data mart and you want to write an export into a flat file that um, is to be maintained to, you know, that flight file you might want to ship it off to a different team or to a different customer. And then again, the description and is deleted is the same. So that really sums up the initial configuration of uh, Pimor Flex. You would obviously go in here and set things up as you would wish. You would create your first, obviously you, you, you pretty much do it from the left to the right. You'll configure your connections, your batches and your projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and configure this um, for our, and get it ready for our next session, which is gonna be around importing metadata. Thank you for watching.